Hello, I'm Atul Kumar, and in 2019, I took an imagined alien visitor on a world tour of 10 places on Earth. One of those places was Queensland in Australia, where I showed the alien the Great Barrier Reef. Since then, the alien has been endlessly worrying about the loss of that reef, and not just the loss of coral reefs on our planet. It's also concerned about the loss of other types of reefs and marine species, which are threatened by climate change, pollution, overfishing, and human structures in the ocean. So to reassure my alien buddy that us humans are working on resolving these problems, I took it to see a solution being developed here on the south coast of the UK. That solution is the concept of 3D printed concrete artificial reefs. You've probably heard about how sunken ships, even sunken cars, can end up being great refuges for marine wildlife. A few years ago here on the south coast of the UK, an artificial surf reef was created at Boscombe. It ended up being, well, not that good for surfing, but to the surprise of some, it was great for underwater wildlife. So Bournemouth University is now part of an international partnership project to deploy 3D printed artificial reefs to help marine wildlife. Hi, Alice. Hi. Hi. So, can you tell us a bit about what's happening here today at Pool Bay? Lovely day for it. Yeah, no, so, so today we're going to be deploying some artificial reef units, so that's what you can see here in front of us. So yeah. these have been 3D printed with concrete. It's an international project, so a European project. We've got partners in France, Spain and Portugal, so we're all deploying the reefs at a similar time to see how they colonise in the different countries. Yeah, great. So, can you tell us why are they artificial reef units? Why are you deploying artificial reef units? So a lot of the natural reefs are quite degraded, so through kind of fishing activities, industrial activities and the construction of artificial man-made structures, um, the natural reefs are degrading quite a lot, so we're trying to promote the marine life in the marine environment to try to give them a home and a habitat to live within. Where are you going to put these artificial reefs then? So these, these nine here that you can see are going to be put alongside the training bank, so just outside the, the mouth of Pool Harbour within Pool Bay. We're going to be on a sandy bed in Studland Bay. We're going to go in about five metres of water and we're going to go, like I say, next to the existing structure. So they're going to be put there to test to see how they survive and see how they get on and how they colonise over the next two years. So Alice, why are they 3D printed? Um, so they're 3D printed so you can make a more complex shape really, so you're not limited by a traditional mould. The normal reef units are kind of made of wood and shuttering, so they're quite kind of either square and they're quite um, uniform in shape. Whereas these you can get a much more kind of surface texture. So you can see here they're really lumpy bumpy. So yeah. each of this is kind of a layer of different concrete. So this has all been pumped out of the 3D printer. And you can get overhangs as well. So you can get features that aren't flat surfaces. So right. you can get that undulating kind of feature. So it's just more attractive for marine life. It creates more habitat for marine life to be able to live within. So with the 3D printing, you've got control over the diversity. You can control different overhangs and lots of different detail. Yeah, so you can basically make whatever you want. Any shape you want, you'll be able to in theory, 3D print as long as you've got the right kind of strength concrete and the right consistency of concrete as well. Yeah, great, okay. So what is the 3D Pair project about? So the 3D Pair project is about 3D printing artificial reefs. So it's an interreg Atlantic project. Um, it's got partners in France, Spain and Portugal. So the University of Cantabria, they're the lead partners and um, they're the engineers. So they're who have actually 3D printed these reef units. And we also have engineering partners in France as well. Um, and then we've got biological partners, so we're biologists in, at Bournemouth University, so we're leading on the biological package. Um, and we've also got partners in Portugal as well who have been advising us and helping us with the biology and the monitoring protocol as well. Great, excellent. So you've got all these different projects across Europe and all, the, all these uh, different partners adding their own expertise from different countries. So Alice, how were these reef units designed? These reef units were designed by surveying the natural reefs that we have in Pool Bay and also the existing artificial structures, things like pipelines and artificial reefs that we already have out there in the marine environment. So we picked features such as the overhangs, the holes in the tunnels that were actually more diverse, so they actually housed a higher diversity of animals. And we found out that certain animals like certain features, so the lobsters for example, uh, really like tunnels, so they like to have an entry and exit hole, so they don't like to be backed up against a hole. So they can so, escape? Yes, yeah, so they like to have a two-way escape rather than just a, a one-way escape. Yeah. So we've got various tunnels that go in one side of the reef unit and outside the other. And we've got some tunnels that go all the way through, so you can swim all the way through the reef unit, through the centre. And um, we've also got holes that are, have a dead end, so you can kind of back yourself into it and then watch for predators out the hole. Yeah. Um, and like you say, yeah, we've got these overhangs as well. 
Yeah, so you've got, you're kind of mimicking the natural environment. You're mimicking the variety and diversity of habitats in the natural environment through the use of 3D printing. The higher the number of different types of habitats you get, the more diverse community you'll have associated with it. So you'll have more niches for different individuals. Yeah, fantastic. So that's the advantage of 3D printing, isn't it? Because you can control that diversity. As within natural habitats, you have a variety of different habitats within that. So you'll have some areas that do have overhangs and certain areas that don't. So different animals are attracted to different types of habitats. Um, so we wanted to try and include them all in, in the reef units. And I see that the texture looks quite grippy, so is that good for sort of mosses and seaweed sort of getting a hold of these, of these reef units as well? Yeah, so this surface texture that's created through the 3D printing process is really good. So it really creates a space for things to be able to latch into. So as you've got these grooves, then the little seeds and the little animals will be able to settle into those grooves and grow and be able to survive. Yeah, it looks like a great new home for all the marine wildlife. Hopefully, yes, that's, that's the plan, fingers crossed. So which examples of wildlife or species are you expecting to colonise these reefs? Um, so a variety of different things really. So we expect to get quite a lot of different seaweeds, so, so marine plants, um, also fish and crabs, so mobile fauna that can kind of come and visit the reef and leave again, um, and also things like sea sponges and a, a variety of different other marine animals that might live on or within the reef unit. Do you think that that increased wildlife could boost the local tourism economy as a result of the improved scuba diving experience? Yes, definitely, potentially. So artificial reefs have been used throughout the world to kind of promote um, tourism and scuba diving. So for the duration of the project, we won't be opening it up to kind of recreational divers because we're going to be surveying it scientifically. But definitely once the project's finished, then it's uh, yeah, open it up for people to use and be able to see how successful they've been as well. Yeah, great. So once that monitoring phase is over, then the general public will be able to come down and scuba dive and have a look around the wildlife that's colonised these reefs. Yeah, definitely. And we're also going to be doing a lot of underwater video as well. So we'll be able to put together some kind of public engagement videos so we can kind of demonstrate what's down there and what is colonising the, the reef units for people who might not be able to dive. Well that's great because one of the benefits of the artificial reef unit further down the coast in Boscombe was to boost that local tourist economy as a result of uh, the expectation of having improved wildlife at, at the artificial surf reefs. If the same thing can happen here, then that, that would be great for the local area. Yeah, definitely. So as you say, with the surf reef, the increase in tourism was mainly around surfing. It didn't kind of take off very well as a surfing reef, but the marine life associated with it is great. It's a great little nursery habitat. So even for commercial fish species as well, it's a good little nursery habitat for things to be able to, to live on and survive on. Yeah, great. Well, let's hope that these artificial reef units boost not only wildlife, but the local economy as well. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> so how long will you be monitoring these reefs after they're put in the water? For the duration of the project, we're going to monitor them for two years. So we have funding to survey them for two years. Um, and we're going to be doing a variety of different things. We're going to be scuba diving. So we're going to be looking at what's in the individual holes, the tunnels, the surfaces, the overhangs. And we're also going to be using a remotely operated vehicle, which okay. is like an underwater drone. So yeah. we can kind of see and video what's, what's in the water without us disturbing them. Because sometimes the divers can disturb kind of marine life. Yeah. So we kind of see what's happening when we're not Great, so you'll be monitoring for two years and then after that the public will be free to come and scuba dive and have a look at the, uh, the wildlife that's colonised these reefs. Yes, yeah, that's the plan, definitely. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So there we have it, an international project to support marine wildlife using the latest 3D printing technology. Having seen the artificial reefs for itself and learned about the project, I can report that the alien is now feeling much more positive about the future of marine wildlife now that humans are using the type of artificial reef approach that they've been using on the alien's planet for thousands of years to great effect. To follow the progress of the artificial reefs and the wildlife that colonise them, please visit the link on the screen www.3dpair.eu and follow hashtag 3dpair on Twitter. After the end of the current funding, the project will ideally continue monitoring the progress of the reefs for many years to come. If you're able and willing to help the project in future with funding or other forms of support, please email Dr Alice Hall at ahall at bournemouth.ac.uk.